All right, so now we're going to do our work about linear transformations and apply them to tensor spaces. We're going to start with our vector space, as always, but now I have to remind us that we have the dual space out there. The vector space, as we've already described, has a basis E mu, and the dual basis is given by E uh, nu, and the relationship, of course, is, as always, E nu, E mu, equals delta nu mu. It sort of binds the two together, right? Uh, this is picked arbitrarily for this vector space v, and it has just the number, you know, of course we're doing dimension 4 and real vector spaces, of course. So we pick this basis e, and using this arbitrary rule, just because we like delta functions and we think this will make things easier, we create a dual vector space, or, or a dual basis with a superscript. Now you can already foreshadow Seeing superscripts means this thing is going to transform contravariantly. Subscripted things transform covariantly. Superscripted things transform contravariantly. And that's why all this notation was chosen to be the way it is, is everything telegraphs important information. So um, uh, now we're going to talk about a second basis. I had a little trouble with E and F last time. I found it kind of annoying. And that's also not typically the way it's done. I'm going to create this second basis and I'm going to call this second basis, I'm going to call it E hat. And I'll call it, say, E hat um, mu. And likewise, its dual is going to be E hat nu. And I hope I can keep these hats up. But it'll have the same rules, right? This is a basis, E hat, the E hat basis will have its dual basis, which is defined through the same uh, delta function. All right, and what we're going to learn is, well, we can already tell, because we know that this object here is, is a co contravariant object, it's going to transform between the unhatted and the hatted basis in the, using the inverse of the matrix that takes us between these two. So if I write E hat equals, well, E hat, say, mu, equals lambda mu nu e nu, which is the which is the standard transformation, a basis transformation. Last time we used F here, but now we're using E hat. The hatted basis, here's our selection of numbers, this is our matrix transformation, and this is our original basis. If this is the transformation in the vector space, the transformation in the dual space is given by E hat superscript equals lambda inverse uh, mu nu e mu, right? I, I wanted this thing to land with a mu up top for some reason, so I had to contract over mu and leave a nu up top, but, but leaving the uh, nu up there doesn't really matter. I, I just need an index, right? But this is a contra variant transformation, and this is a covariant transformation. And this is actually, this defines covariance, right? Because remember, the basis vectors of the underlying vector space is kind of where we started this whole story, right? It's where it all began. So if we're going to change the basis, we're going to change the basis vectors. And if we do that with a matrix, that matrix is kind of where we start. And everything that works opposite to that matrix, like for example the dual basis, we are going to call, oh, that's opposite of where we started, so we're going to call it contra. That is completely the origin of this language, and it's not any more complicated than that. Now, um, of course, uh, we want to be able to apply this to a general vector. So if we consider a general vector that uh, starts with, let's say, a mu e mu, this is a vector w, and w is an element of our vector space v. This is also expressible in terms of the hatted basis, and I might write that a hat nu e hat nu. Now I know that to transform from this basis vector to this basis vector, I am going to use the um, well, let's say, uh, uh, let's say I'm going to transform, I'm sorry, from this basis 
to this basis. That's the way I've written it here, right? I've, I've, I've set this up to transform from the hatted basis to the unhatted basis. But when I do that, I'm going to go this way, and I'm using the tool lambda to do it. But when I use, but that's because I'm, this is a covariant object, and I know that because it's a covariant object, because the lower index, and I know lambda is the tool for covariant objects, but I know that also when I go this way, right, in this direction, I'm going to use the tool lambda inverse, and that's the contravariant object, and that's because this thing is contravariant. Notice that everything's going from the hatted basis to the unhatted basis. I'm going in the same direction. I'm using the opposite tools to go in the same direction. And that's important. Contra doesn't mean you're going the opposite way. You're all going in the same direction in this case, but you're using the opposite tool to do it. You use the correct tool for the correct type of object. And a contravariant object, oops, a contravariant object uses the inverse matrix to a covariant object. It's pretty much as simple as that. And um, if, as long as you kind of keep a, remembering that, you'll, uh, uh, you don't even have to think too much about it anymore. All you have to remember is that the uh, objects with upper indices transform with the inverse matrix to the objects with lower indices. Now we need to apply this to tensor products. We can, we can do it for uh, the dual vector space because we know this will be a contravariant transformation and its components will have a covariant transformation, right, because you can imagine B, mu, E, nu, this thing is obviously covariant now and it uses lambda to transform, this thing is contravariant so it uses lambda inverse to transform, where lambda is defined for the underlying favored vector space, right, that's sort of why it ends up being favored. But now we have to be able to do transformations for things that look like um, that look like V tensor product, V tensor product, say V star, etc., etc. Right? We have to be able to transform objects from these tensor product spaces. So let's have a look at that now. All right. So now we'll begin this. I'm going to move all this over. Hmm, let's see if I can move it far enough. Well, maybe not. What I'll do is I'll probably just I'll just erase it. Just erase it all. Okay, so we'll begin with a tensor product space. Let's pick this one. V, V star, V star. This is a rank 1, 2 tensor product space. The 1 corresponds to the vectors, which are first in, in regular structured tensor product spaces, and the 2 refers to the... Um, uh, covector spaces which are attached second. So a representative basis for this thing is going to be E mu, E nu, and E lambda. And that is a, 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 a basis that we've chosen because the way, in this all flowed we chose a basis for V and there it is. The basis for V through the, uh, the, the rule of what a dual basis is identifies a basis for uh, the covector space, the dual space, and we put those copies of those basis vectors there. And now we know that an arbitrary tensor that lives in this tensor product space, which by the way could also be T12, right? That's another way of writing. This is the same way as writing this. Um, an arbitrary uh, tensor in that tensor product space would be given by A superscript mu nu lambda. And everything is nice and ordered in the indices here, and they're also ordered here. And as I said before, the reason we redundantly order things is because in general relativity, uh, often this is not carried around. In fact, it almost never is. And so you are learning everything you need to know just by this, um, this uh, object here. So now we're going to try and we're going to transform this into the hat basis, right? So the vector v has a hat basis also. And I'm going to write down the transformation from this time from e unhatted to e hatted. And I'll write that out as e mu equals lambda mu nu e hat nu. Now notice this is actually I've kind of switched up on you. Before I had e hat in terms of 
E, but that's because I was transforming from E hat to E, but now I'm transforming from E to E hat. This is the guy that's transforming, and this is the direction. That's the matrix that does it. Now, it will turn out, of course, that if you want to transform the other way, the matrix that does it is the inverse matrix, but that does not make this a contravariant object. Because remember, the direction that establishes core contravariance is the basis transformation in the underlying vector space. So in this case, it's going from E to E hat. So this now is the definition of that transformation. Whatever those numbers are, that establishes what is Cohen contravariant. So I'm going to make this substitution everywhere in here. And I will do that in the following way. I will go A mu nu lambda. And here I'm going to write lambda mu nu e hat mu tensor product lambda inverse and this is e hat um, nu so this has to contract with a nu down here and um, well, no, no, no. What I'm going to do is I'm I'm dumb. I got to make these things dummy indices, right? They've got to um, I've got to make these things dummy indices. So let me. So I'll just say I'm going to use some Roman letters. I, and this has to end up with a new up here, right? And then lambda inverse e hat k k, and it ends up with a lambda like that. Okay, so. This is, this now is the, uh, the same thing. This, this here is exactly identical to this here because this is, this, is, this is an equality right here. So I can just make this substitution in each of these places. And I can bring these guys, these are constants, right? And this is a linear product. The tensor product is a multilinear product. So I can bring them all out and I will get a mu nu lambda, and then I'll get a lambda, a lambda inverse, and a lambda inverse. I won't worry about the uh, indices anymore for now. E nu hat, E, let's see, this was E nu hat, no, no, E mu hat, right? This is an E mu, E mu hat, E new hat, see this eyes go away and the only thing that's left is the mu, and uh, E hat lambda. So this thing now is in the new basis, right? That's in the new basis, and this is the component in the new basis. And so we'll know that, so we know that this thing here has to equal a hat mu nu lambda. This whole thing here equals a hat mu nu lambda. And just as before, what we're, what we're going to realize is that if we just wanted to transform um, A to the new basis, we would have to take the opposite of these matrices here, right? It would Because it, it's going to transform... Uh, this, this is going to transform in the opposite as the basis vectors are going to transform, or, or each index is going to transform opposite, right? Since this is a uh, co, uh, covariant index, and that's a contravariant index, you're going to, instead of using lambda, you'll use lambda inverse, and these two uh, covariant indices will use lambda instead of, of inverse lambda. So I can write that um, uh, a hat mu, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So a hat mu nu lambda equals a mu nu lambda, lambda, lambda inverse, lambda inverse. And then, of course, this is going to end up being a mu nu lambda equals um, uh, a, a, oops, a hat mu 
new lambda, lambda inverse, lambda, lambda, once you work it all out. And of course, that just shows that the components um, are all work that this transformation is, is exactly the opposite transformation as this transformation here, or the combined transformation here. Now with this um, language we can understand what a fully covariant or fully contravariant tensor might mean. This guy here is clearly mixed, right? It's got contravariant parts and covariant parts. The component, of course, has contravariant, covariant, but the basis vector has covariant and contravariant exactly in, uh, in, in the opposite way. So this is actually a mixed tensor because it, it doesn't transform fully covariantly or fully contravariantly. But we can easily imagine a member of this vector product space, right, uh, tensor product space, which would be T03, and it would be a rank 03 tensor, and its basis vectors would look like E mu, E nu, E lambda, and its prime and its uh, uh, components would be E mu nu lambda, and this object is fully we call it fully covariant, right? Because it's every 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 one of its um, uh, indices is down, and of course it's because the basis vector comes from this very nice space of all dual vectors. And it's a map between that looks for three vectors, right? This thing is a map that looks for three vectors and gives you a real number using the same prescription that we've always done. But we do know that this thing is going to transform in a fully uh, covariant way. And likewise, of course, I could have done this and we would have had a different tensor product space and understand, the key thing to understand here is, all right, this is a fully, uh, we call it a fully contravariant tensor because we usually refer to the quality of the tensor based on the component, right? The component is what kind of defines it. So this is a fully covariant tensor. This is a fully contravariant tensor, despite the fact that the important part is the opposite, right? Uh, you know, it's just because, like I said, we throw this away when we do most of general relativity. It's, it, you have to sort of put it back in your mind, which isn't a bad idea to help you kind of keep track of things, although when we do our lesson on index gymnastics, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be about not using all of this stuff that we learned. It's going to be about not using it. It's kind of ironic, but I think it's an important part of getting to where we want to be. Um, but the thing is to understand, and I'll just say it again, this guy comes from a tensor product space, uh, 0, 3, and this guy comes from a tensor product space 3, 0, right? This is a rank 3, 0 tensor. It's really important to understand these are totally different spaces. And just like I said earlier, you can't add vectors from two different vector spaces. There's no relationship between the vectors in this space and the vectors in this space, even if the underlying vector space that builds them is still V, right? We, we have V, we get V star, and with V star, we build this thing, and with V, we build this thing. B v and V star have no relationship to each other in the sense that um, they have the same dimensionality and they're real numbers, but you can't take any vectors in V and correlate them with any maps in V star. That's not possible to do yet. And the whole secret of this game is to establish that correspondence. That's what we're going to get to when we start talking about the metric tensor, and that's what we're going to get to when we start talking about inner products. But for right now, understand these are totally different vector spaces. They're tensor product spaces, but tensor product spaces are vector spaces. So keep that in mind. All right, and the one other thing I'll say before we end this particular lecture is you'll notice that things are classified by how they transform. Right? We classified this, and we called it covariant. We classified this, and we called it contra variant, and we classified this by calling it covariant, and we classified this by, uh, by calling it this contra, right? This is contravariant. By calling this by calling it covariant. We're naming things based on how they transform. 
we're saying, oh, we're using the completely covariant form of the tensor, the completely convariant form of the tensor. We're using the mixed form of tensor product space. We start naming things and labeling things based on how they transform under basis transformations, right? Under basis transformations between two different bases for the same vector space. This is a universal principle that is very, uh, I don't want to call it a principle, I guess. This is a universal thing that happens in physics all the time. What we discover is that some of the core properties of the most fundamental things in the universe, their core properties are the way they transform when either we change coordinate systems or the way they transform when we do things called gauge transformations, depending on what field you're studying. Um, in some cases, uh, uh, also the way you, they transform under uh, spatial transformations, boosts and or rotations and reflections and things like that. And every subatomic particle is identified by how it transforms under Lorentz and Poincaré transformations. And in general relativity, it's how things transform under general coordinate transformations, which we'll be slowly get, which we're getting to. So this notion, this is not a trivial idea that the, the way things transform really has to become our, has become the foundation of how physics is studied and understood. Um, who knew? But that seems to be what things are, are the, the easiest way to classify things. The most logical way to classify things is how they transform when we change bases or when we change uh, uh, perspectives in, in physics. Okay, so our, we'll uh, move off this subject for our next lecture and uh, come back and start something new.